Hank Rogers and Alexei Pajnatov created one of the most important games of the modern world and helped distribute it to the world. They're also involved with the new movie Tetris that is coming out uh, from Apple Studios. And I understand that we have here one of the games that actually influenced the creation of this game. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, so when I was a child, I loved this puzzle. This is a board puzzle. It contains the set of of all shapes made out of five cubes, five squares, if we, we, we talk. And you see there are all different lovely shapes and you could play with it for hours. And when you then try to put it back in the box, you are in real trouble. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, to spoil this a little bit and point out that yeah. even Alexei has a cheat sheet on the back of his puzzle <laughs> because this is a hard game, right? Like even when you play Tetris for thousands, thousands of hours, it still requires thought. You never exactly. learn it because the patterns are always different. Yeah. So I did play with this and when I got access to the something like personal computer, no such stuff existed in 84, but, but, but I have this access <laughs> at my job. So I start to put together small puzzles, riddles, and once I decide to make a game based on uh, the, 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 those pieces. And when I put my small routines, how to manipulate with them, the idea of real time come to me. And that was the moment. I downsized it immediately, so instead of five pieces, I put it in four. Imme immediately out of 12 pieces, I go down to seven, which is a very good, that's the human, human operative memory size. Okay. And so people could remember the pieces and how to manip manipulate with them. So that's how Tetris was born. So why do you both think that this game is so evocative, that it's, it's addictive to play, it seems to tap into something really fundamental, and we've, scientists have even talked about the Tetris effect, that you play this game and it gets in your brain and you dream about it. Why do you think that's the case? Well, there's a couple of uh, reasons. Uh, one is when the pieces come appear, and you have to make decisions about what you're going to do, which button you're going to press. It, it's random each time. And so you actually have to make decisions. There are a lot of other games that you play, and you can play them by memory. Like when you play Mario, the first, I don't know how many levels, you can just do it by memory. In fact, there's a machine that you can hook up to your Nintendo machine, which records your button presses. And then you can just say, play it up until level five, and then you can take over. Which just means that your mind is not actually working or thinking during that uh, part of the game. And in real life, there's many people who, uh, like myself, everyone included, we go through our routine, our daily routine, and we don't make decisions anymore. We just all oh, walk downstairs, have a cup of coffee, get dressed, go to the office, da, 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 and go home and watch TV. I mean, there's no decision in any of that. It's just automatic. So this is like making you make the little decisions and they make them faster and faster and faster, which I think is a pleasure center. The other side of it is that this game is constructive. You're not shooting anything. You're not destroying anything. You're trying to create lines of blocks. And so that's a constructive thing. So you're doing order out of chaos. And life is about order out of chaos. Yeah, and that's why uh, we have such a diversity of audience. Uh, before Tetris, the uh, game industry was 95-5, uh, male-female audience. But with the Tetris, is 50-50. And that's an important thing. Yeah, this is something that every child starts to learn about spatial awareness. It doesn't matter if you're into shooting games or if you're into puzzles, everybody can get into this kind of experience. I mean, something. It doesn't fit the box. It's an original, okay. <laughs> so, the new movie, Tetris, starring Taron Edgerton, talks about the invention of the game, the distribution of it, how it became this global phenomenon. Tell me about the movie and how accurately you think it portrays what really happened. They took a year and a half of our lives and squeezed it into two hours. Mm -hmm. So to get the point across, like the things that were happening in, in real time took longer. And to get that across to the audience, they had to squeeze them into little bits and pieces. And so I, did, I think they did a fantastic job of getting the feeling across 
you know, I was definitely there breaking the law. Mm -hmm. So was he by us, t by talking and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, when we got down to the negotiation, we could feel the pressure from the Politburo. Right. But I mean, this pressure is more insidious and behind the scenes than it's like overt mm -hmm. with people coming in with, I don't know, whatever. Right. <laughs> but to that point, there is a really interesting historic and societal moment here. It's not just the video game, it's that Tetris in a way helped open up our relations between the Soviet Union and the West and was one of these first sort of major cultural exchanges of the 1980s that like, oh yeah, look at this. We've got a game made in Russia that's going out to the rest of the world. And, and we had a cultural exchange which showed that people in Russia weren't like the, the how can I say, the evil Soviet Union that, that was part of the US mindset at the time. You know, this is just a game, and and we f we find out that people are just people, mm -hmm. and there's it's the, there's no tanks or bullets or any of that kind of stuff involved. You know, he's a ma mathematician, mm -hmm. and the mathematicians are equal everywhere you go in the world. Yeah. So. Yeah, and the friendship is very very big part of the movie. How it involved and how we recognize each other and become friends. That's a very truthful spiritual part. Maybe maybe some details were, were exaggerated. It's a Hollywood, you know. One of the things that's interesting to me about Tetris is how it's evolved over the years, that there have been multiple versions for multiple platforms. I mean, we have the NES version here, we have the Game Boy version, but it continues to come out for new platforms. There's a really good VR implementation of Tetris. Um, what do you think of the way the game has evolved and what do you think the next generation of Tetris is? Um, we have a lot to do with how the game evolved. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we formed the Tetris company, early on, first of all, we, what we did is we made a version of Tetris which was that like the version that everybody could play no matter which uh, direction they came from. They came from Sega or they came from Nintendo, which were very different. We made one version. And then we said, okay, anybody who wants a licensed Tetris, you have to make a version that's at least as good as any version that's out there. So we, that means that we raise the bar. Yeah, and include our version. And always go back right. to the basic, make sure that you start with the basic and then add stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't like start here and then go there. Mm -hmm. Start here and then go somewhere. So we, um, we made sure that uh, all versions of Tetris all stayed true to the original game. Mm -hmm. Uh, we worked hard to make sure that, you know, when we switch from button-based game to a, you know, uh, how can I say, uh, touch. touch screen, yeah. that was uh, that was a very difficult transition. But I think we did a pretty good job. When I first played the VR version, I thought before I even saw it, I was like. Well, I guess you're just going to be stuck in a room with the blocks falling in front of you. What's the point of that? But what's interesting about it is that it very much the environment becomes part of the game. The environment immerses you into it. It changes as you're playing the game. It reflects how many blocks you've dropped, how fast you're coming. And it was just a really interesting way. Like, oh, yeah, this game is continuing to evolve with the new technology. Tetris, Tetris Effects is a very important version because... That is what he's talking about. Uh, that's what you call yes. uh, uh, virtual VR. reality. Yeah. 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 Ah, Tetris okay, oh, okay, okay, yes, yes, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Because first time I feel that it's not just abstract geometry, it's, it's also all these images and stuff very important for the game. So Mizuguchi, the designer of uh, Tetris Effect, and I spent quite some time, I took him to Burning Man, and you know we talked about Zen Tetris and sort of like getting a, what's the word, a kind of a psychedelic experience out of Tetris. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh man, he did such an awesome job. So is there a version of Tetris that you see, this is what it's gonna look like in 10 years, this is how it will continue to evolve? I, I think there, that we haven't seen the version that is going to happen in 10 years. Because the, the game industry evolves, and as and when new things get discovered, you know, who, who knows what the impact of AI will have on, on all of gaming. For example, there's going to be big changes in, in, in the game industry, and it's hard to predict what, that, what those are. If there was going to be a sequel, to the current Tetris movie. What would you want to be in the sequel? Is it a different time period? Is it a different part of the story? Actually, um, Ed, the story doesn't end when uh, Nintendo beats Atari and Alexi comes to the States. There was intrigue that happened in 95 where um, I go to bat, Alexi's my partner by then, 
and Elorg has a, is a private company. And then we're in court battling to, or not in court yet, but we're battling to see who has the rights to Tetris. They claim they have rights, but they were, they were just agents. And uh, Nintendo had registered the copyrights and trademarks in their name. And uh, we didn't have enough money to go to 60 countries and fight for those copyrights and trademarks. So we ended up forming the, the, the Tetris company. And this, you know, this happens at the end of 95. All licenses are ending at the end of 95, including Nintendo's, all of them. And I'm in Moscow trying to make a deal with the Lord to create a new company called the Tetris Company. So, uh, and then what happened after with the Tetris Company, I think that's a fascinating story. So the story doesn't end uh, in 19, uh, yeah, 1991 or 1989 when the, when the court case was won and when the movie ends, it still continues today. I'm fine with just this one. <laughs> I think, the, I think they, they did a very good job picking the, the most sharp moment of the history of my game and, and our relationship. That was a very, very right point to, to make the movie around it. So final question, if you're only allowed to play one version of Tetris for the rest of your lives, you can only play one, would it be original PC version, would it be Nintendo Entertainment System, Game Boy, Tetris Effect, what would be your one Tetris experience? Oh, me, so um, <laughs> I worked actually on a version of Tetris, it's not even out anymore, but uh, we tried to set the bar and I created a version called Tetris Zone and uh, it had all of the things that I wanted at that time in the game, so it, it's the most playable version of Tetris for me. Yeah, I like the zone version, but I am in love with the modern version for, for, for the browser. So I am still on this um, keys, key, keys, keyboard, uh, key, key, keyboard uh, interface, so that would be my version. Well, thank you both for joining us. Well, thanks for having thank us. You, thank you for having us. Come on, you guys are the kings of cliffhangers! Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out more i9 videos here on YouTube.